I think we're good to go. Welcome to Coffee and Campaign Building. And this is the introduction to a series that I want to do on me building a campaign. And less of me building it, I guess I'll tell you what it is and what it isn't, but more so my methods for doing that. And I do want to give credit to those that have come before me, if, especially if I'm aware of them, obviously. So if you have not seen the following, I highly recommend it. And I'll try to post links in the description when I'm done uh, filming this. But Don Forge Cast, his campaign building, campaign considerations, uh, main man, Wood WWAD, Ander has fantastic world building or campaign building series. Brian Gregory has another one along with Captain Gothnog. He's got a couple out that are fantastic. And Samwise7RPG, Tim, he's got a great world building series as well. Those are all fantastic series that I've watched most of. I need to rewatch a couple of them because it's been a while. But I highly recommend those. They've done this before. And if I'm not including someone, I'm sorry. Let me know, and I will gladly put it in. Um, I've probably seen more than just those. Uh, those are just off the top of my head for certain. I wanted to mention those. So, anyways, continuing on, um, I did a world building series, and it was kind of sporadic. It wasn't as well planned as I would have liked. I thought it was good. I thought there was plenty of good advice in there, uh, plenty of good tips. But what I'm going to do with this series is I think a better method for for the goal I have for it and I'll tell you why in a second but what this series is what it will be and what it won't be is what I'd like to go over next what it is is showing my methods for campaign building preparing for a campaign which includes the world building which includes getting it ready uh, for whatever system you're using and having it ready to play from start uh, well, from start of building it to start of actually playing it. And that process can take a long time. But I will do, be doing screen shares over this live hangout, showing different documents of mine, how I do those, and kind of tell you what's going through my head as I do it, which is kind of scary. So be ready for that. But I'll show sources of inspiration. No matter how strange they are, I will tell you exactly why I chose to do something one way or why I chose to do it, you know, a different way. And you'll learn that. Uh, I also want it to be a time for Q&A regarding the process, regarding you know how I build a campaign or how do I, asking questions like, how do you approach this? How do you approach this? Well, why'd you do it that way? Things like that. Um, because I think it'd be really cool to have a live Q&A like that. A lot of people are doing things live, and I think that's an excellent way to go with something like this. And the reason is, and I'll go over what this series is not, it is not me telling you how to approach campaign building. I'm just demonstrating how I do it, showing my methods, uh, you know, not hiding anything, because I don't think I don't think you should just take advice from the internet or from anywhere and just do it 100% their way. Because what makes your world special, your campaign, your game special, is how you approach it. What comes, you know, developing your own methods, developing through trial and error, creative thinking. We can't tell you, we being anyone on the internet posting anything, we can't tell you the right way or the wrong way, uh, but we're just here to get you thinking. Here to get you thinking about different ideas. You know, if you like them, take them, make them your own. That's what we're here for. So what this series isn't is me telling you exactly how to do it. I'm just showing you how I do it to hopefully offer some inspiration. Um, this series is not, and I don't want this to sound rude, it's not me looking for ideas. Feel free to throw ideas out there to me. I'm always open to that, but I will probably not address them on air just because I'm, I want this to be more for everyone watching, less for my benefit. Um, but feel free to throw them out there. I will probably get back to you through some other medium or at a later time over that. And this will not be me just showing off my world. Everyone's got awesome worlds. I've seen some other worlds out there that other YouTubers have put up, and they're phenomenal. I would never try to show off a world, so I'm just going to be showing you documents for my process. I'm not going to spend as much time on 
super details of my world just so you can see, you know, okay, I do a map at this point, and then I do a history, here's a brief history, how far back I go, things like that. So that's what this series will not be. Um, I just wanted to throw that out there. But above all, what's important to remember is, once again, we can't tell you the right way or the wrong way. We're just here to get you thinking, and that's what I want this to be. That's why I think live will be better because I can do, you know, a live Q&A, like I said, leave a comment, question, I can address those as I'm doing it, and it should be fun. This first one I didn't really advertise or let a whole lot of people know what was going on, so most of you may be watching it after I've posted it, it won't be live anymore, but that's this is just an introduction, like I said. I'm still going to show some stuff today and get you thinking about how I approach things, and I'm hoping that this coming Saturday... Uh, I will be able to do maybe another one. So if you see this, tune in Saturday. But what I'm going to do now is explain that my D&D campaign is, should be wrapping up within the next 8 to 12 months. Um, I know that may seem like a while, but one of my favorite methods, Ander, um, over at Wood WWAD, he talked, I can't remember if it was in the comments or one of his, if it was actually in a video, about how he will spend up to a year ahead of time preparing a campaign or a world before he actually goes out and plays it. He talked about, you know, he'll have like a thousand NPCs fully developed before the game ever begins. And I think that's awesome. Obviously, you don't have to go to that great of depth, but... I think that it's really cool. I enjoy the process. So if you enjoy the process, why not? That's what I'm thinking. But I figure now's about the time to get started. It's going to take place in the same world as my other campaign just because the players think it would be really cool, and so do I, if they can hear about their previous characters, like they are legends and whatnot. So I'm going to give that to them. And it'll be in the same world. It'll be on a different continent, so we have a whole new feel, whole new culture, quite a ways away. But, and once again, we're not entirely sure on what system we're using. It'll be some type of D&D system. We are hoping that D&D Next turns out to be awesome, and by that time, it hopefully will almost be out. If it's not and we don't like it, maybe we'll go with another system. Maybe we'll jump over to Pathfinder and do it that way. But the current campaign is 4th edition, the one I'm in now. But the campaign preparation I'll be doing, uh, the world building I'll be doing in this series is completely separate of systems. You don't need to have a system. That's one of the last steps, um, I think. It's one of the last steps I choose to address. Now, obviously it might matter if you are playing Vampire versus D&D. You might want to be aware of that ahead of time. But for my purpose, I will address systems very last, if I even do in this little series. So that's where we're at. I'm going to show you a quick map. If I can pull this up, bear with me here. I haven't done a lot of hangouts on my own, but I think I've got the hang of this. So screen share. And what I do first is, well, I should explain what I actually do first is I just come up with ideas. As I'm getting cool ideas, cool names, cool places, um, in my head, whether it's pictures, I save them. You know, I save pictures in a folder on my computer that inspire me. I write down names in a notebook that I want to use. If it's just like, well, that sounds like a cool city name, I'll write it down just so I have those when I actually start the campaign building. This is a map I drew, and I just, inspiration hit me one night, and I drew it, and I ended up liking it. So... What you can see here, and I should say the starting inspiration for this campaign or for part of this world, this area up here, and let me see if I can put like a circle around it or something. This area, Melandia, Chaos Fields, that whole area up top, that is a very dark area. Um, it's very, and a lot of this is undefined at this point as far as why or what. Uh, so dark about it, but it's a very dark place. Chaos Fields, obviously, that doesn't sound like a great place. The inspiration came from the game, board game, Hero Quest. And I did a video on unboxing the past, and I found my Hero Quest game. So we've played it a couple times. 
and it's a lot of fun. But the art, the the story behind it really inspired me to have this really dark area. Um, so that's where the inspiration came from for Melandia, and that's up north. Now down in the south part, change a color here. Oops, change that one. Okay, well anyways, this new circle down here, Nalia, this whole bottom stretch um, that goes underneath these mountains here, stretches back here. This was all inspired by a single picture. It was inspired by, let me actually show you the picture. That's what this series is for, right? Oops, don't have my magic hat on. Okay, Pathfinder. I have the Game Mastery Guide for Pathfinder. I'll be playing in my first official Pathfinder game on Don Forgecast channel on Sunday. I think it's live. hope I was supposed to advertise for that. Uh, but if not, forget I said it. Anyways, this book, I was told, was a fantastic resource, and it is. No matter what system you're part of, it's got so many great things in it. It's got a great section on world building, which I'm going to go to right now because there, that's where the picture is. Creating a world. There we go. So, a single picture can inspire an entire area, no matter how weird it seems. But that picture right there, that picture is on page 145 of the Pathfinder Game Mastery Guide. I just thought that that picture was... It was inspiring. I had the right music playing at that time. I listened to music when I world build and such. And it just made me think of a, very, a place very in tune with nature, uh, very untouched by evil, chaos, and all that. And so that is what spawned Nalia, that southern portion of the map. And it is very untouched by the evil. The only... The bad things that go on in Nalia are straight uh, nature happening. So there's some there's some beasts there you wouldn't want to interact with, things like that. But they're all natural. It's very, you know, I guess it, there's no evil there or hardly any at all. So and it's very secluded from everything else. Next up would be Asmar. Now Asmar as well as Norfar. Those two are the two main populated areas. That's where most of the people live. Norfar stretches all the way up and down this entire coast, all the way out uh, to this first river. And that area is the most heavily populated. Tons of cities, even though I don't have them all on there yet. Asmar uh, stretches from kind of right where the circle ends here all the way up to this river. Hope you can see that. This, this city is actually part of Asmar and then all the way back down the coast here. But Asmar is where the capital city is, Adalor. Right there's capital city. Cordier's Coast is port city as well, but that's where the second largest population of people is in that whole entire region or kingdom, if you will. And Nothing directly inspired those other than I wanted, obviously, places where people lived. Melandia is a terrible place. Nalia is a very beautiful place, but not many people live there. Very small villages down there. I've only got two to find right now, two or three. But that is the, one of the first steps I take is to build the map. I like to have the map in my head just because I can see where everything is in relation to each other and the story can start coming together a lot easier. Okay, next up. Once I have the map, and I'll show you the paper process. I draw the map on graph paper, just because I like to have a little organization. And draw it on graph paper. You might not be able to see it too well. But once it's drawn, I don't like to do much more on it because I'm afraid that if I turn out not liking that and get rid of it, then I'm messing up what the map looks like. So I will just make copies. 
So I've got two copies of the, that map that I just made on a copy machine. And then I can draw all over them. If I don't like it, throw it away and make another copy. That's what I love to do, though, because I'm so much more comfortable just drawing on a copy of it than on the regular one. On the regular one, I'm scared of, you know, well, what if I don't want this? Then my map looks like crap. So, anyways, just to explain the kind of the dots around the outside really quickly, you can use software to make your map. You can use uh, Campaign Cartographer is the one I tried. I used it on my old PC because I don't have it for Mac. And it was great. Uh, I made it look exactly like the picture, but for some reason when I got to putting rivers in, it kept deleting things on my map. I don't know if I didn't have patches for it or what. And that just, uh, that angered me. So I stopped using it. I was like, I'm just going to do it by hand. Um, it won't be that bad, old school. More fun anyways, right? So you can use those, and that was, those dots were to kind of measure out things to transfer them to Campaign Cartographer. But turned out not liking that, that very much, so I didn't use it. But I've got the map down, and then before the map, when I was talking about just writing down things you know you want in that world, or things that inspire you, things that sound like, yeah, that I want that somewhere in there. I'll show quick thing, races. And the world is called Air, A-E-R. Uh, so some of these documents have that, some of them don't. But let me get to the right document here. Okay. Races of air. And I just listed some races. The very first step is to list races I wanted. I knew I wanted an elf. I knew I wanted Eladrin or High Elf, you could call it. Just a different type of elf. Um, I like the Deva race. And I wanted that somehow incorporated. I'm still not sure why or how. That's why I haven't written anything. But I just made a note that I was interested in that. Dwarves. Gnomes, which once again, kind of undefined at this point. Goliaths. I really like the Goliath race. Uh, especially fitting for some of the story I have coming later. Half-elves. You know, if there's elves and humans, half-elves are usually going to be about... And then however you want to say the last one, tiefling, tiefling. Um, they play a very small role, but because I'm putting this in the same world as my other campaign, I included them because part of their history, uh, the history of that race, would influence this area. So a very small influence, but they're there nonetheless. Now going through, then once I actually figured out what I wanted from each race, I started filling them in. So for the elves... Um, High in the mountains, travelers will never know they exist because they hide so well. The high elves are Eladrin, almost extinct. They're the first guardians, which comes to play in the story later. Um, now we go down dwarves. Dwarves are extinct. Dwarves are gone. Truth be told, there probably are a couple. Um, by a couple, I mean maybe 50 to 100, which is basically extinct but they're so far beneath the earth. They're so hidden away from everything, just living out their last days that if my guys find them, I think that'll be really cool to think they're extinct. Now there's plenty of dwarven cities, dungeons, and evidence of them all over the place, but as an actual race, they're extinct here. That was something I knew I wanted from the very beginning. I thought that was a cool idea. Goliaths uh, live high in the mountains, they're nomadic, they're moving around in this place. Uh, they move with the seasons or animals, but they have certain areas they settle in during each season. So, then humans, um, humans inhabit a large amount of the population, and that's all the farther I've gotten. Humans are the main, main chunk of the population. So, that was an example of something I did a lot of before I even drew the map or even started working on this. I just knew that the next world I build, I wanted this idea in. For example, the dwarf one. I knew I wanted dwarves to be extinct or extremely hard to find. So I just made a note of that. Now, what comes next? 
let's see. Could do the welcome. Okay. Show you this next. This was starting notes on a world I wanted to make. And then I kind of abandoned one of the main ideas, but I had all the notes and I kept uh, one of the main storylines. This is basically a creation story for this area. And I'm adding, we use the 4th edition Pantheon of Gods or the D&D set of gods, but now that we're moving on, I'm starting to add my own. And there's going to be four added to it. And this is kind of their story. I won't go through it, but they were leaders of tribes. Uh, they basically ascended onto this magical isle that appeared way back. They fought. It's called the Battle of First Light. Um, historians argue over, you know, was that one day? Was that a thousand years? Was it even true? Things like that. So I just had an idea for an inspiration for the very beginning. And I used that. Somewhat. Now, the floating isle is what I changed. It's the floating isle uh, doesn't circle the planet like it used to, or like it was going to in the original story. But now the next part. Let me see. Make sure I didn't miss anything. I think we're pretty good. Uh, one of the cities. I'll just show this quick. One of the cities we used to play test. D&D Next, or one of the cities I made. Very, very, very small village, and I won't do this with most towns, but I drew kind of an overview map of what it looked like, and I've shown this, I think, in one other video. But anyways, I drew that just for a little play test. I usually don't go quite to this detail for towns. I will just draw a I'll draw a city and show the different districts or where they're laid out. I don't think I have... Yeah, I don't think I have my other folder here, so I'll show that next time of my current campaign, what cities look like, what I actually draw them out as. But let's move on. Now pictures. If you haven't used this resource, Obsidian Portal is a fantastic organization, a set of wiki pages for organizing RPGs. And they're actually doing Obsidian Portal Reforged, which is a Kickstarter, and I think it ends pretty soon. Um, but they're reforging it, making it a lot better, more user-friendly, uh, cooler looking, I know, and a lot of things there. So check that out, definitely. Um, I need to donate because I love their website. And if you enjoy, you know, a product or a cause, donate. Not saying donate to Obsidian Portal, but like the Dwarven Forge Kickstarter. I don't use that stuff, but if you do, donate if you can. Even just a little bit. Uh, it's just good to show your support for causes that you, not so much causes, but uh, projects you believe in and you enjoy. Now, okay, screen share. Okay, my Obsidian Portal page. And you'll notice the title says Adalon. That was the original name of the continent. I like air better. I just haven't changed that on there yet. So, anyways, let's go to the wiki. Let's go to places. Got the four kingdoms. Red means I haven't touched it yet or haven't edited it, created the page. Uh, I just have the title. So I haven't done anything with Norfar yet. Asmar. And mostly at this point, you'll see that these are just pictures I found that match my idea of a place. Or sometimes the picture actually inspired the place. So in Asmar, you have Adalor, the capital, Courtier's Coast, and Manzir. Adalor is actually, yeah, it's the banner picture. But approaching it from the sea, that's what you would see. Courtier's Coast. If I can get it to load. There we go. Looks somewhat like this. 
And these aren't exact, but they're pictures that reminded me of that place in my head, or like I said, pictures that actually inspired that place. So my Obsidian portal right now is just storing pictures for each place. I'll go back and add descriptions at a later time. Manzir, which is kind of the guarding point to the darkness in the north, and it sits on a lake. This was perfect. And no, I did not draw any of these pictures. I found them online. They may belong to something else, so credit where credit is due. Um, I don't know who, but I did not draw these. Melandia, this is the darker area. Chaos Fields, real quick look there. Way of Mardoon is way north. This is a very, very dark place. Once again, I don't have much more detail than that, other than some of the history, but I know it's a dark place. Nalia, uh, Bela Thrawn, which is this picture. It's just a little city or town. Hilltop is another town. A uh, very small, very peaceful area. I'm sure my players will do what they can to mess that up. But that's what my Obsidian Portal is holding right now, is pictures for these. Okay. Now, the next step or what else I have, I should say, is the history. This was one of my favorite parts, writing the history. You don't need to write, obviously, a whole history to prepare for a campaign area, but since I have the time and I enjoy it, I'm going to. What I have so far, screen share, history there. Okay. Started with three basic ages. You have the ancient ages, which are so long ago that some people don't know if that's actually true or just legends. You have the lost ages, where a lot of things got messed up. It was dark. It's kind of like the dark ages. Um, a lot of things got really messed up and very bloody, and a lot of the records are gone. You can see there's an event called the Swift Doom. There's uh, Echoes of the Guardians, the Beasting, which is a war. Uh, dragon Rule, that was a period where dragons were in the area. They're not as... Uh, I guess there aren't as many dragons as my previous campaign, which in a video I did on dragons, that's kind of how I like it. They're very mysterious, very ancient, and very rare. But you can see things that happened in the ancient ages where that battle of first light I talked about, the forging where gods tried to fix what they'd messed up, the blood feast, which, oh, the blood feast, sorry, was the war, not the beasting. Gathering of guardians is where the high elves became guardians. Age of tribal tranquility, peacetime, yeah. So then you skip through the, the lost ages to the new birth. This is where... I actually started keeping track of, you know, time in the years. So, zero and B, or zero years since the new birth. The High Motion Victory was when some people came to the land and took over. Norfar Defection, people defected. Um, this is where the Tiefling or Tiefling Refuge came in. That's influenced by another area in the world from my previous campaign. Tears of Air, this is one of my favorites. Um, this is where they set out to actually conquer Nalia, which is that really peaceful area. And it did not work out well. They destroyed a lot of good things. And so it's like the land is crying, basically. And that is a very dark uh, point in history of this world. Great Divide, yeah. Anyways, you can see, I'm not going to go through all these, but you can see there's an invasion by an empire that collapsed. Um, at this point, Caldir Stormhawk's march is when a king basically arose through his actions. He was appointed king. Um, then the gifting, which has kind of become like a holiday where he gives donations from all around the kingdoms. And they proceed to a temple, which is just outside of Nalia, and they're basically bestowing gifts 
to make up for the tears of air which happened so long ago. But then you get into other things. In the final event, which I have not actually finished yet, is the Estonia Chronicles. That is the current campaign I'm in. They're in Estonia, world-ending stuff. That's the epic campaign. I probably won't ever do an epic campaign again just because it'll make that one so much more epic, but that's basically their story is going to go there. And then present time in the year. So a lot to fill in still. I'm going to change some of it, but you can see how I lay out the whole history. Um, the really ancient stuff, obviously, you don't want to go through year by year. You could. Um, it would just take a lot of calculating. And I think it's a little more mysterious if you're unsure of how long ago it was. Same with the Lost Ages. And the Beasting, just so I correct that. Uh, dark Forces came to the realm. Beasts, natural and unnatural, dominated and ruled the realm. Also when dragons arrived. So, that's the Beasting. And you can see how a lot of the things I say are very generic. They're very um, unfinished. You know, Beasts came to the realm and started to rule. There's not a lot of detail there, but it leaves me a lot of room to actually mess around with it and change things. Because if you define every little tiny detail, there's not a lot of room left for your players to influence it and change things. And that is what made our current game so fun, is that they were able to influence things they didn't even know. I built the world while we were playing a lot of it, and they were unaware of that, but it's kind of cool. Okay, make sure I covered everything I wanted. But that is kind of an introduction to what this is going to be. Um, I will actually start building some on some of the other videos and walking you through that process. But you saw, in this one, you saw a map. You saw the documents, how I approach that, how I use Obsidian Portal for, you know, holding pictures and storing pictures. And I actually have files on my computer of pictures. Under my documents, I have a big folder just called pictures or fantasy pictures. Then I have that divided out into um, like NPCs, new NPCs, meaning NPCs in that folder have not been used yet. Locations, new locations. And I break all that down and use it when it seems to fit or when I have the inspiration to use it. So that is the overview of what this series is going to be. Now in the future, hopefully, uh, we get some Q&A going because I will actually let people know I'm going to do this before I do it. And you can submit comments, questions regarding the process, regarding how I do things, and I can just answer it right then and there um, as part of it. So this video a lot of people will see after the live event, but I will try to go back and answer any questions in the comments. So let's plan on, hmm, let's plan on Saturday, this Saturday, which is, I should know this, but I don't, Saturday the 20th, and let's plan on, right now it's going to be sometime right around noon, Central Standard Time. Um, so let's plan on, oh geez, I don't even know, noon to one, somewhere in there I will start this event, the next one, or this series, the next video. It'll be live. You can get involved by asking questions. Watch the beginning of this video if you didn't see it as, uh, as to what this series is about and what it's not about. There's certain types of questions I won't address during it for certain reasons. Um, but we'll plan on sometime in there starting the next one. I feel like I'm forgetting something think for a second. Oh, Sunday. And I don't, I think I can advertise for this. Sunday, Don Forge Cast is doing a DMs table live game where myself um, and a couple other awesome guys are actually going to play Pathfinder. My first time playing Pathfinder, but officially, we're going to play a Pathfinder game and it's going to be a lot of fun. I already know that. But here's the kicker. I'm going to put the pressure on Andrew. 
since I've never played, I'm watching his Pathfinder Basics videos. So Sunday, if I don't know how to play, I gotta blame him, right? No, seriously though, it'll be a fun time. And I think that's around two, one or two p.m. Mountain time. Check with him, or check over on his page, Monday Night Gaming, on Facebook. And if you would like to stay in touch easier and more up to date, stay in touch with my Facebook page, PhD and D, because that's where I'm actually going to post um, official times, official starting times for this. I'm going to say, you know, if I know that I'm going to start at 12:30 p.m. this Saturday, that's where I'll say that instead of putting up a video just for that. So it's PhD and D on Facebook. That's where you can submit questions to things you would like addressed, or my email address is dmprofessor227 at gmail.com. And you can feel free to email me anything you want there. But other than that, I think this kind of wraps up today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you're gaming this week, and I hope it's awesome. Otherwise, check back this coming Saturday for the next live event. We'll just call it whatever I call this, coffee and campaign building. Coffee's cold by now. It's kind of gross. But thanks for watching. Have a great week of gaming and whatever else you're doing, and I'll see you Saturday.